Hi, we're here today with Penelope Scambly Shot, and we're at BB to Go on Northwest 23rd. I've got a bowl of ramen in front of me, and you've got a bowl of something really good and green looking. Yeah, yeah I don't know. It's, there's some beef in there somewhere. I don't know what it is, but let's do this. You're watching Poets in Portland eating food. So stoked to eat authentic Korean food. Oh, here comes Penelope. Here comes Penelope. She's on the screen now. Thanks for meeting me here. Korean in the back. Well, I'm not growing it along. I'm growing uh, along in the back. Okay. I'm bringing back the 80s. Oh, good. It's all good. Good. Yeah. Right. So here we are. We're at Mimi to go. Okay. And we're waiting for our food. All right. And I brought you a couple of books. Oh, cool. I don't have these. I, I do have this one. Okay. I'll take it off. Okay. So this is Failing the River. Is this the new one? No. The newest. There are two new ones. Yeah. The new one is uh, House of the Cardamoms. That's the one I've been reading. Okay. Yeah, you got that. But I'm only about halfway through. Okay. And also a chapbook, which was a lot of fun to do because it was one of these home a day things. Yeah. Have you seen these where people are trying to get you to commit to do a poem a day? My friend, you know Chris Luna? Yeah, sure. He did one that was based on another piece, but it's amazing. And it's, I can't think of it right now. Yeah. But yeah, he did something like that too and put it together. Yeah, it's a chapter or, called yeah. November Quilt. Uh -huh. 30 days, half November. There are 30 poems. And what's your theme? And... I had an interesting moment with my husband. Okay. And we've been married a real long time. Yeah. But he was he had the radio on and I was being really disturbed by the news. But anyway, this this was about refugees or something. And I was just going, ugh. Right? And I said to my husband, I just can't I said, You don't know me. Mm -hmm. All these years, you don't know me. You don't know that I can't listen to this. Yeah, yeah. And I think that I wrote November Quilt out of kind of almost a loneliness. Mm -hmm. Like, here is what is on my mind. Right, right. And it includes a lot of stuff from my childhood. Uh -huh. Like sitting in the corridor like this, waiting for the Russians to bomb. Right. And the poems kind of connected yeah. because, like, if one poem ended with something about an apple, mm -hmm. I might start the next one with an apple. Cool. And so, the, presumably, they connect. Yeah. Cool. So, when you started writing um, in the 60s, I think it was kind of a radical thing to do. It was kind of a, a feminist thing because I don't think there were too many women who were writing poetry. It was a lot of still very male dominated place. We had Gertrude Stein, and we had um, um, Adrian Rich with um, but she was diving into the all, diving into the wreck. That was long and after. And I taught that to my middle school kids. What did they say? They were blown away. This was an amazing piece, and, yeah. and we were it was a mythology class. They were really connecting with that piece. Yeah, I uh, I taught with her for a while at Rutgers. Yeah, but. Um, I really started writing poetry as a little kid. Okay. I will recite for you the first poem I ever wrote. If you do that, then I'll recite for you the first poem I wrote. That's fair. Okay. Okay. I lived in New York City. Uh huh. And I lived on the 13th floor. There were several six story walk ups that Did you I. You grew up in Manhattan? In Manhattan. Okay. Yeah, a block and a half on the Hudson River. Okay. And. I looked at the little buildings, and they were, I felt bad for them because they were short. Because yeah. walk-ups could only be six floors. Yeah. You couldn't make people walk up with them. Well, I, yeah, I've been to Paris, and you walked up like five or six floors, and you're 
gasped after that. Yeah. Okay, so this was addressed to little buildings. Sad little skyscraper on a New York City street. If only you could grow a few more feet, then you would be tall and could reach the sky and wouldn't be thought of as small at all. So that's my empathy for short buildings. <laughs> What's yours? So my poem is uh, The moon shone like blood Below though Deep in the pit Two foes sit With kerosene up to their hip One foe had ten matches The other only had nine And the poem is called Arms Race Oh my gosh oh, I, That's where I live in the eighth grade I would love yeah. to be with little buildings <laughs> Thank you Oh that's beautiful Going up here's the ramen. Penelope just got her food right now. Look at this. What is this called? I forget what it's called, but it sure is gorgeous. It has a lot of lettuce. Now, how's your food? What kind of is it? This spicy? Is, it's just the right it's amount. It's like a rice spicy. salad with meat. And the, and, uh, and what are those? Yeah, the, what are these called? The, the glass noodles. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're very good. This is delicious. And in terms of the spicy morning, the meat is spicy, but nothing else is, so it's good. You're doing a little plug for S. Pellegrino. Oh, this is good stuff. Are you the one who's brought it sometimes to White Dog? Camera? No, the, the Pellegrino. No, I don't. no, somebody does. I'll bring um, Thank you. orange juice, oh, orange okay. juice and sparkling stuff. The cheaper, the cheaper the better. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. The poet's eating food. It's good to be a poet who can eat food every once in a while. So I was. Um, I'm so bored with cooking that it's really nice to eat some different flavor. This is delicious, by the way. So, why is community so important for poets versus other arts? You don't think it's important for, like, visual artists or musicians? Or? I don't know. As a musician, I never had the guts to go to, like, Los Angeles or to New York to be part of that rock and roll scene. Mostly because I knew I'd probably wind up dead. But because that's part of the rock and roll lifestyle, you know, but. Yeah. But you think about it, and you think about like nurture versus nature, right? Are you naturally born a gifted poet or is it nurtured in you in the environment? You know, and I've been thinking a lot about. Um, well, I think you have to read. So I think about um, in Paris in like the 19th century with uh, Picasso and Van Gogh and, um, you know, um, and at Montmartre. And I think of um, the Italian Renaissance and Florence, you know, with Michelangelo and Da Vinci. And I think of um, Brooklyn right now. And I think right now we're living in a time of genius. We're living in an age of genius. What do you think about that? Well, there are probably more writers than readers. <laughs> So can you tell me, what's the difference between the New Jersey poetry scene and the poetry scene here in Portland? In New Jersey, everybody wishes they were in New York. Right. They're highly competitive. They can go to New York anytime, though. Yeah. But they're very competitive. And what I love about the scene here is it's very mutually supportive. Right. It's so amazing. Like, it's a loving community. Yeah. When I first met you, uh, you were reading at um, at Mother Fuqua, and with, it was with uh, Harold Johnson. And I had Harold Johnson's book about um, citizenship. Yeah. Harold Johnson's got an amazing he's book a, about he's citizenship. He's a wonderful writer. Oh yeah. And, and I went writer. to hear him, and then I heard you also. <coughs> and that's when you invited me to come to the White Dog Saloon. Salon. Salon. I, Salon. Should, I should make it with a better. Like, you know, Andrea Hollander, she lived in, uh, she's a very good poet. I'm in a couple Is she of local? With, yeah. But she came here from Arkansas, where she lived out in the country and was never, didn't know other poets. And uh, 
I think she's very happy being here in Portland because she connected people in person, not just by mail. And that's so important to be able to make those connections and to be able to try to get published or something or to try to... Well, not to get published, but to, to get um, feedback is really useful. Like, I'm in a couple of critique groups, and it's a little like playing tennis. You don't want to play with people who aren't as good as you because it's... But if you are working with people who've been writing a long time and are good readers and critics, I just love the idea of you being a C because it's it goes to the whole aspect of being an educator and being somebody who, who spreads the beauty of poetry and just um, how, how we're all we have all got a story to tell, you know. I think everybody starts out as a poet and an artist and then school beats it out of them. Right? And what I'm trying to do is give back to everybody the poet that they were as a little kid. Because I think we, we need that way of seeing the world. Before we go, I got a dumb question. Can we talk about your filing method? Because I've just started using this accordion file and it doesn't really work for me. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it work, so maybe it will work in the future. But. Okay, can you tell me about your filing method? Um, no, because I don't have a good one. I have, my poems are on the computer, and Are you a Mac or PC person? PC. Okay. And um, my, like, keeping track of things I send out yeah. is on yellow paper yeah. and pen. Awesome. And when I hear from the place that I sent to, I write either yes or no in the date I heard to. And that's, and that's, that's my system? filing system. Yeah. Were you in the Rolling Stones or the Beatles back in the 60s? I was into Elvis. cupboards of the butlery with a jam jar my nana filled and emptied and washed and dried every morning of every summer of my whole childhood and which is here in my china cabinet and back in that locked attic with the wind-up gramophone and the boxes of thin letters from my uncle who died in the Pacific and also in the words we were instructed not to say Hay is for horses, or horses sweat, men perspire, women glow. I am still glowing in the yellow light of so many summers. My love is like a red, red rose on the screened porch, and Norman Rockwell's Four Freedoms over the bed. The century given to me from the beginning last skirmish of the Indian Wars and the war to end war to the first jagged flicker of black and white on howdy Judy afternoons, a distant childhood without breasts or bleeding, a place that is still in me and inside my grown children as they clip bunches of grapes off stems with Nana's grape shears. Here I stand as a stranger in the 21st century. And whoever will know me must remember streetcars, remember sparks, remember a split pen nib dipped into bottle ink and rolling out Palmer method. I am a foreigner here on my hard disk, but in Nana's footed porcelain compote dish, I am the wrinkled peach, and I am also the seed. Okay.